2019 election is just in front of us and there are so many issues that people want to know about that are going to affect them. One of the biggest issues of course is housing. We live in one of the most expensive real estate markets in the world and you as a homeowner or a home buyer want to know how the policy decisions of the, all the parties are going to affect you. On this special edition of Drinks with Darren, we're going to look at the four big parties and how their decisions could affect you as a homeowner. We're going to talk about the pros, the cons for homeowners and buyers. And because we're on a very special edition of Drinks with Darren, we're coming to you right from the Parliament Buildings in Ottawa, Ontario. sitting beside the beautiful Ottawa River right now, completely surrounded by glass. If you have not been to Ottawa, Ottawa's got to be one of the most beautiful Canadian cities ever. There are these incredible things here, like the Bank of Canada, the Supreme Court of Canada, of course the Parliament Buildings, and if you're lucky, even walking down the street, you might have run into a familiar face at the scene of the every day. So, incredible city, and I thank the city of Ottawa for hosting. What I am here for is to be a guest of the Canadian Real Estate Association's Political Action Committee. So, thank you to the city of Ottawa, thank you to the Canadian Real Estate Association, and thank you to the members of my Real Estate Association that are watching this, because I'm pleased and happy to be here as a representative of the real estate community and home buyers and home sellers in British Columbia. I am so excited to have you here for this very special edition, the Ottawa edition, the election edition of Drinks with Darren. And we are in one of the best places in Canada to have Drinks with Darren. We are at Mill Street Brewery. We are in the Ottawa location. Now this brewery was originally founded in Toronto and I'm sure you have had some of them here before. They are all over Canada. They do an incredible job. One of their claims of fame is their organic ale and their organic lagers. The Ottawa location was opened in 2012, but this brewery has been around since 2002 in Canada, with the Toronto location being the first one. So, one of my favorites, as mentioned, is the organic options that they have. I'm going to be trying to name their organic lager called the 100th Meridian Organic Ale. Before my beer gets here, though, let's talk a little bit about what we're going to be looking at on this episode of Drinks with Darren. So the election is upon us, as we mentioned, and there are four big parties in Canada now, the Green Party being one of them. I thought it was important to let you know what you can expect on housing policy from all the four big parties before you make your vote. There's so many big things in this election that everybody is passionate about. Climate change, the environment, housing cost of living, there's so many things, and what I can help you with today is give you my opinion from a realtor's lens on what these housing policies might mean for you. Alright, so here we are with our organic amber lager. That looks really good. I'm going to have some. One of the best things about doing drinks with Darren is at 11 a.m. right now. So sometimes you look like a little bit of an alcoholic, but all in the name of getting you incredible information. That is delicious. And the second sip was delicious as well. It is a nice light lager. I don't know that I can tell the difference that it's organic. I don't know if you can tell the difference that everything's organic, but it sure tastes awesome. And that is absolutely perfect as a nice after work beer with a meal it would pair really well. If you have not tried Mill Street, try it. So let's get into it right away. And the first one we're going to get into is the incumbent party, the Liberal Party. What promises have the Liberal Party made for people that are either looking to buy a home or people that are in homes? And as we go through all of these different options, I really think it's important that you look at it through your own personal lens. Not everything that appeals to a home buyer is going to appeal to a home seller and vice versa. Some things will appeal to all of you. So take that as you will as we go through these options. So, the Liberal platform and the promises they're making if they are elected in the 2019 election are the following. Liberals are promising to help people with annual incomes below $120,000 and up to $150,000 in high cost areas such as our own cities in Vancouver and Lower Mainland by taking up to 10% off the price of a home with the first time home buyer incentive. Budget at $1.25 billion over three years. This applies to homes up to 789,000 expensive regions like Vancouver. And the party also promises a national anti-speculation tax 
of 1% on non-resident foreign orders, which is estimated to create a revenue of $940 million over four years. Lastly, they have recently increased the amount first-time buyers can withdraw from their RRSPs to $35,000, $25,000, up $10,000 in the 2019 budget. So there's a little bit of incentive in there in terms of the government taking ownership of part of the home. If you haven't heard about that new home buyers program, I actually think it's quite cool. It opens up affordability for people by the government really sharing a portion of ownership of the home. Now there's lots of details on that. We've done a previous video on that information, so you can certainly check that out if interested. All in all, I like the Liberals' plan. It allows more people to get into the housing market. It puts a cap on foreign speculation. Now how that holds out will be tough to say, but it's basically opened the doors for more people to afford homes, which I think is awesome. So I'm going to give a great A rating to the Liberals. Second on our list is the big party, the Conservatives. Now, what are the Conservatives promising to you in this election as either a home buyer or a home seller or generally a resident of Canada? Let's look. The Conservative Party promises to change the Liberals' mortgage stress test to ensure first time home buyers aren't necessarily prevented from getting mortgages and to work towards removing the stress test from mortgage renewals. It would increase the amortization periods on insured mortgages to 30 years for first time buyers to lower monthly payments make surplus federal real estate available for development to increase the supply of housing and to hold a $20 million inquiry in the money laundering in the real estate sector. To be honest with you, I love all these ideas as well. If there is dirty money in the real estate industry, we need to get rid of that. And I think that's something everybody needs to care about. I also love the idea of bumping the stress test from 25 years up to 30 years. That is a great idea, which I'm surprised the Liberals didn't take advantage of in this election campaign. Now, the other thing that I think is really great conservatives are doing is removing the stress test for people that want to renew their mortgages. That's incredibly important for anybody that's a homeowner because if you do not have the ability to move your mortgage to a different bank because maybe your home is worth a little bit less than what you bought paid for it, and now you have to stick with the bank, are you getting the best rate from that bank? So I, I like both those ideas as well. I'm also giving the to the conservatives a great deal later. Next on the list, we've got the NDP, the New Democratic Party. What kind of promises are they making to home buyers and home sellers this year? The NDP promises to create 500,000 units of affordable rental housing in the next 10 years, financed by $5 billion in the first 15 months of borrowing, and also to create fast start funds to help communities with co-ops, social, and non-profit housing. It will waive the federal GST on construction and new rentals, reintroduce three year terms to CMDC insured mortgages on entry level homes, double the home buyer's tax credit $1,500, and put a floor on buyer's tax on sales to non communities. Now, there's a word in there that I think is really interesting, and that is affordable housing. When we hear this buzzword in politics of affordable housing, it's really important that we understand what does that mean. Does affordable housing mean subsidized housing? Does that mean housing that people should not be living in in an area they shouldn't be living in because they cannot afford to live there? There's lots of things to consider when you are talking about affordable housing. Now, this plan that the NDP has proposed, it talks a lot about social housing, about rental housing, which is all important for our community. It does not do a lot for the average homeowner, and it does not offer a lot for the average home buyer, except for up in the amortization of the three years on the stress test. So, it'd be interesting to see how the NDP fares in their housing debate when they're talking about what they're prepared to do for their buyers and home sellers. I personally believe that the NDP would be. Now, the Greens are the last party on our list, and they are a smaller party, but this year there is a lot of talk that they may surprise everybody because of their stance on the environment and how important climate change and the environment is to people. It's something near and dear to my heart, and I hope it's something near and dear to your heart as well. But let's talk about what their policies are in regards to housing. The Greens will make housing a fundamental human right. The local provinces to build 25,000 new rental homes and 15,000 rehabilitated homes annually for the next 10 years. They promise to boost funding for new builds by 750 million to help 125,000 rental households, better support provincial and municipal housing projects, provide financing to non-profits to expand housing for seniors, 
people with special needs and low-income families, and restore tax incentives for building rental housing. Now, the interesting thing about the Green proposal, to me, as a taxpayer, as a homeowner, as a member of society, is I love everything that they are proposing. I think it's all incredible. And without further thought, I would give it all a great name marketing. What my concern with their proposal is, is where is all that funding coming from? And those goals are incredibly ambitious. So we hear people and politicians say a lot of incredible things to get into power. However, the question is, how do they pay for it? Is that going to be a raise in property taxes for the average person watching this video? How is this all going to be funded? So while I'm going to give them a grade A, I'm going to give them a grade A minus. I do have concerns about how they're going to achieve such a lofty goal and also how they're going to fund such a goal. The question comes down in this election to many things. And I mean, there's so much more on the table than just housing. But now you're up to speed on what these parties are offering. I'd be curious to know what your opinion is on the best policy being offered out there by the federal parties. There seems to be a theme with a lot of this, though. The theme seems to be that the mortgage stress test has been difficult for Canadians. It's been difficult on many markets, not only in the lower mainland, as you see when you're getting the statistics, but across Canada, Ottawa, Toronto, no different. The next one seems to be the flavor of taxing the market Canadian residents, people from foreign countries. Now, while we know that immigration is incredibly important to our economy, taxing foreign entities when they're purchasing homes, I think, personally, is an incredible idea because we need to make sure that the people that live here, work here, and pay taxes here have the first opportunity to buy a home. And if their money is not as powerful as money from outside countries, we need to make sure we give everybody a level playing field. So I think that's an incredible idea as well. The last one I'm going to give credit for is specifically to the Liberals because I do think the home buyers plan in terms of the government taking an equity share in a property is kind of a cool idea. It allows people to get into a home that is likely more expensive and bring their monthly payments down considerably each month, all while allowing them to have a property that's probably outside their means without that help. It does make life more affordable and it also shows the government's investment and encouragement in the real estate market in Canada. So I kind of think it's cool, I think it's interesting, and it'll be very interesting to see how much uptake it gets over the course of four years if the Liberal Party gets reelected. So without further ado, we're going to get into the statistics of what's going on in the real marketplace. Now these statistics are from the whole price index of the Fraser Valley Board, and they are general for the Fraser Valley, as you know, from Mission all the way to North Delta. So let's get into condominiums first. This is what condominiums are doing in the last three months. They are down about 1.05%. We saw a little bit of a softening in the market of condominiums in the last three months. The summer did prove to be fruitful for home sales, so that number has recovered slightly from where it was previously. And year over year, the condominiums are down about 7.58. Now this has increased, meaning the decrease has actually gotten smaller, which is a good thing for all those condominium owners out there. It seems like things are slowly improving. Townhomes have a very similar score card, albeit not as bad. In the last three months, townhomes are down just a meager 0.48%. And in the last three months, they are down 4.77%. So, again, fruitful summer is pretty good for home sales. And let's see what happens going into the fall market and this campaign season. Detached homes, as it's been consistent, are faring the best out of all three types of property. Now, detached homes in the last three months are down 1.05%, which is not that bad. And that's kind of consistent with what we're seeing with both townhomes and condominiums. In the last year, they are down 3.94%. I want to thank you for joining me on this episode of Drinks with Darren. I love doing these with you guys, and I hope they are incredibly valuable to you. I love giving you information on the real estate and I'd love to hear about what you would like to hear about. I've got some incredible ideas and some incredible interviews coming up in the next few months, and I implore you to keep an eye out for Drinks With Dan. Subscribe to the channel, and we will look forward to seeing you very shortly. Thanks, Dan.